creates a reaction or something that's really important in our lives, that's how fast something occurs. You remember mathematically that a rate is something that an event over a certain amount of time, like uh, the speed of a car is a rate, 30 miles in one hour. 60 miles in one hour, or 60 miles per hour, is much faster a rate than is 30 miles an hour. Well, in chemistry, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to look at rates of reaction in terms of moles per liter per second. Now, when I look at that kind of an idea, moles per liter, that's molarity. So moles per liter is talking about the change in molarity of the substance over a given amount of time, usually seconds, sometimes minutes, and sometimes hours. Some reactions are extremely slow. Uh, for instance, the tarnishing of silver is a very, very slow rate of reaction, but the combustion of ethanol is extremely a high rate of reaction. So when we look at rates of reactions, we're going to define them this way. The rate is equal to some mathematical constant multiplied by some concentration in a balanced chemical equation. Now, for this reaction, that would be something like if I had the reaction of A plus B produces some product. Now, you'll notice that I don't include B there. And not all reactions are a function of A and B. For instance, uh, we did a reaction the other day with uh, sodium thiosulfate. The sodium thiosulfate, when I doubled the concentration of sodium thiosulfate, the reaction was much faster. When I doubled the concentration of the hydrochloric acid, it had absolutely no effect on the reaction. So that, when, in that case, was only relative to the concentration of sodium thiosulfate. So a lot of reactions depend on one or the other of the chemicals being involved in the limiting step. Now we talked about activated complexes. In the formation of an activated complex, if I look at the diagram of it, if I have a reactant, and I have a product that is of lower energy, as I go up over that energy hill, you remember we talked about the input of a certain amount of energy that we call threshold energy. From that activated complex, which is some chemical composition of an intermediate between the reactants and the products, some point where other atoms had to join to it and then they spontaneously fell apart. What we see then is that that um, Activated complex may only involve one of the substances. The other substances may be things like catalysts or inhibitors that are affecting that reaction. But in this instance, only the A was involved in the limiting step. So we only included it. Now, all that has to be determined experimentally. Now, when I look at it from that perspective, checking out the rate of the reaction, we're going to say, well, that rate of reaction is a function of what goes on with the concentration of A. Now there are other things that affect it as well. You can look at changes in temperature, you can look at changes in pressure, but all of those are associated with the value of K, the reaction constant. We're only going to look right now at how much the rate changes relative to the concentration change of A. So if I have a specific rate and I double my concentration of A, you would expect the rate of the reaction to be twice as fast. If that occurs, that's what we call a first order reaction. Now, what would have happened if we had doubled the, the concentration of A and my rate of my reaction had gone up by a quadrupling effect? Well, the only way that could have happened is if doubling the concentration and gets four times over here if that had been relative to the square of the concentration of A. We refer to that as a second order reaction. And we'll show you some of that in a table form here in just a second. But you'll start seeing rates like this that are relative to the concentration of A or relative to the concentration of A squared. Uh, some of them maybe even uh, to the third power. We don't deal with any of those here in, in, uh, at the high school level. We also might see some that are relative to the concentration of B uh, as the sum of those, or as the product of those two, uh, three as well. If it were first order relative to the concentration of B, second order relative to the concentration of A, 
we would say that that's a third order rate reaction. Now, uh, you add then the exponents to indicate that. And you'll see some of those in the tabular data that I'm about to give you. All right, let's look at the tabular data I've put on the board here. If I look at the trials, one, two, and three, and I hold the, constant, uh, the concentration of A and B, both constant, to get myself kind of a benchmark on the first one. At 0.1 moles per liter concentration of A and 0.1 moles per liter concentration of B, my rate is 5 times 10 to the minus 2 moles per liter per second is the change in the concentration uh, of the reaction. Now, these numbers are just arbitrary. I, I don't have even a sample that I'm giving you here. Uh, I can do that later on, but these substances, these numbers are just here to show you what would happen if the reaction were first order relative to the concentration of one or the other, or second order relative to the concentration of another. So, I'm arbitrarily saying, well, if I changed 5 times 10 to the minus 2 moles per liter relative to uh, reacting the first two, it gives me this benchmark. But look what happens when I change my concentration of A. When I double my concentration of A, my rate of my reaction doubles from 5 to 10. Now you can basically, we write these like this, and that one is a scientific notation, but these aren't. But what we've done is try to hold the exponents to the power of 10 the same so that you can actually see the relationship of the numbers and how they're changing. So if I double the concentration of A, and my rate doubles, what order is it relative to the concentration of A? Let's go ahead and write it down down here. The rate is equal to our multiple constant, like this, times the concentration of A, and we know that it's first order relative to the concentration of A. First order, you'll remember, says if we double the concentration, the rate doubles. Now let's take a look and see what happens when we change the concentration of B. But we have to hold our concentration of A at the same. And we know if we have a 10 times 10 to the minus 2 rate with this relationship, and then I double the concentration of B, look what happens to my rate. That one increases by four times. It quadruples the rate of the reaction. So I know that my reaction is second order relative to the concentration of B, and it would be written like this. Now to complete that, we don't actually need the one up on top of there. Now, that would be a way of determining the rate order expression from tabular data. Now I'm going to change this just a little bit, and then we're going to try another one. Okay, now I've changed my data table just very slightly. This is a different reaction using different substances for A and for B. I'm going to write up my reaction uh, rate law expression down below. And I've made some simple changes on my data table to reflect this new reaction. You'll see as I doubled my concentration of A but left my concentration of B the same, what happened to my reaction? Nothing. So what order is it relative to the concentration of A? We can say it's zero order relative to the concentration of A. There was no change. Now here you have to be kind of careful. What do we mean by uh, a to the zeroth power. Well, you remember in your algebra classes, x to the zero is one. Well, is it one a? No, it's one. Mathematically, it's just one. So that be the case, that is absorbed into the constant and it actually goes away. I'll wait for just a second and I will change that to reflect that. Now let's look at the concentration B and see how it has an effect on this. Now as I hold the concentration of A constant for the second, change, and I double the concentration of B, I increase by a quadrupling effect. So it's second order relative to the concentration of B in this experiment. So now cleaning up my mess, I can remove that, if I move that over so it's not taking as much space, there is my great law expression for this tabular data. Now we can see uh, other types of reactions same way, all you look for is what happens when I change it. Does it double? It doubles its first order. Does it quadruple? If it does, then it's um, second order. Okay, is there a way of predicting what would happen if it were to triple? If it were a third order reaction, would it go from 
quadrupling? Well, wait a minute. If I look at the, sec uh, the third power, 2 squared is 4. Okay, so what's 2 to the third power? 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. So you would see it increase by 8-fold if it were a third order reaction rate. There again, we don't deal with any of them here at this level, but it is interesting to see how those powers actually work relative to our concentrations and our rate changes.